to WandaVision Episode 9, Thoughts. Oh, I'm going to miss this show. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. And I might talk about how... Yeah, so also potentially spoilers for the X-Men movies leading up to this point. Since I might talk about... Okay, now it doesn't really look like Ralph Boner in this is... Peter from the Fox X-Men movies, but yeah, and I I will dis discuss theories that might spoil upcoming movies that involve Wanda and or the multiverse in some way. And as usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such. Uh, yeah, Easter eggs on this show, especially videos made by new rock stars, Screen Rant, Nerdist, Screen Crush. Now that this show is off the air, there's a chance it's going to be a really long time before the next time I see a hex hexagonal shape. There we go. And I'm extremely okay with that. Nah, I don't think there's too many on the show. I enjoy the theorizing about what it means. So by now we know uh, that at least some of the internet theories did not pan out. You know, there, there may be some intentional misdirects, like... You know, those were not the Fantastic Four with the with the vehicle that I'm personally not really bothered by, but I can understand if some people are. I mean, right from the start of the MCU, there have been Easter eggs that people mistook for setup. You know, Iron Man 1 has what appears to be Captain America's shield, but then in Iron Man 2, they kind of make a joke about out of how it isn't. And there's a deleted opening to The Incredible Hulk that featured a frozen Steve Rogers being uncovered from the ice. I'm told I rerun that scene like five times. I still can't quite pick out where he's supposed to be, but anyway. And yeah, so there was a theory that White Vision may be the return of Ultron. That hasn't really been either confirmed or rejected by this episode, because by the end of this episode, White Vision has all of the memories. Let's see. Yeah, I, th I think, wait. Every last one? He, certain, he, he definitely had some of them, now that I'm thinking about it. I th yeah, I think he, he gave him all of the... Yeah, yeah, because he unlocked them, because they were still inside, because this is the original Vision's body. And some of his brain was still in there, and the, the memories had been buried, but not removed. And, you know, the, the Ultron was like 50% of what Vision originally was. So, there's, there's a chance. And basically, the last time we see him in this, he's not really, he's no longer Hayward's tool. And he's not... I guess we don't know if he's evil or not. We just know for sure that he's... He, he really doesn't seem like he's going to be going after Vision or Wanda anymore. Well, Vision... Yeah, Vision doesn't... Is, is gone by the end of the episode anyway. And... Let's see... Yeah, so... Some other questions we didn't have the answers to before this episode. Is there someone else between <laughs> behind Agatha Harkness? That hasn't been completely... There's no one directly referenced in this episode. But I think there's a chance that someone... I, th I think there's a chance that there's someone behind Agatha. Someone that put the idea in her head to, hey, go check out the all the spells cast in Westview. In in the 1693 flashback in episode 8, she seemed surprised that she had the power to absorb the life force of the other witches. At first, she seemed to think that she would die at their hand, and she expressed surprise, which suggests that maybe there was, like... Let's go with Mephisto. Mephisto was off in the distance, and he he kind of liked that Agatha is practicing evil magic that could come in handy to him. So he 
intentionally does something that leads to Agatha absorbing their life force. And I think we might see him in Doctor Strange too. Maybe it'll turn out, may, maybe there wasn't anyone behind Agatha. You know, it, I, I will grant that most, I think most of us who theorize there's someone behind Agatha Harkness, we're doing so because of the comic books more than anything that's actually been in the MCU so far. So it is possible, you know, that's the thing. They, 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 they bring up things from the comics and then they change them so they would frequently it's so that they work better for the MCU but yeah I still I am I am I really appreciate that they didn't actually have Steve Rogers turn out to be a sleeper agent that when he said hail Hydra it wasn't genuine he was using it to trick someone who worked for Hydra that is something I am very appreciative of the the writers for deciding to handle it that way Anyway, another question was, could the twins survive outside of the force field? And this episode says, certainly not their bodies. I've, I've heard theory that their spirits might still be around, and Wanda needs to find a way to put them in other bodies, which, you know, I mean, it seems like if you're going to bring in the Wanda's kids with vision and you're going to give them superpowers and you're going to dress them in the the garb of their superhero identities you must be trying to set up young avengers i i don't really see it it seems like a lot of effort to put into if it's not setting up something like that not that you know honestly if i look back on this video in 10 years and it's like well that didn't happen I, I would be okay with that because they did really, they hit me right in the field a number of times real hard and I appreciate that. And yeah, so another question was, yeah, basically it does appear that Pietro or Fietro as, I think Agatha was the first one to call him that fake Pietro. That is not actually the Fox X-Men Peter. It's just, you know, it's stunt casting. They cast the same actor as that. And, yeah, you know, they they got us. We, we really thought that that would be, but, you know, the first time he appears, he's, you know, a it's a stunt casting of a surprise family member suddenly showing up, and that's kind of a thing on sitcoms. So the fact that it wasn't also our you know, Pietro or Peter, yeah, it's, it's, you know, and I don't, I mean, sometimes in the past, the MCU will do a thing, and then if it plays well, then later they'll be like, here's the thing again, and I, I think there is a, a certain chance that, you know, maybe it will turn out to be, you know, yeah, that that once once we get the multiverse, which by the end of this episode, by the end of this show, we still don't have, but there's a very clear indication that it's coming, and yeah, so so the ah, what's the word? There's a chance that Evan Peters will show up as the Fox X Men continuity. Peter and you know yeah they they could still do that and let's see. so I guess the idea is supposed to be that Wanda wanted Peter Pietro to come back and Agatha intercepted that message and then she sent Ralph who and and we still don't know I mean I guess by the end of this episode it must be that Agatha gave him the speed powers and made sure that the speed powers behaved like the MCU Pietro rather than the Fox X-Men Peter
Yeah, I, th I feel like that, that makes a lot of sense. And we know, certainly Agatha had a hand in doing that. And we know that the, the I guess I'll just call him Ralph. We, we know now that Ralph was actually the, the person who lived in the house that, that Agatha was also, let's see, so the, yeah, I guess that is, And, you know, she told us in, she told us in Wanda in episode 8, it, you know, Ralph, Ralph Yetro is her eyes and ears, or was for, for the time, so she was, yeah. And, let's see, and, and yeah, you know. It, it, you know, she, Agatha was always talking about her unseen husband, Ralph, and it turns out Ralph was the, the actor who lived in, in that house. You know, the, the, yeah, the, the reason I and others are saying Ralph is an actor is that he has a headshot in the, you know, when, when Monica is going through some of his things, she finds a headshot and that's kind of an actor thing, you know. Now, let's see. Yeah, and this episode does not have an actor that Paul Bettany has been waiting to work with for a long time. It's just himself, and he was... Yeah, and he has apparently come forward and, and admitted that and said, Oh, they're gonna hate me, aren't they? But it was, it was, I can appreciate some really solid, effective trolling that was. And I do think he did a really good job. I mean... Obviously, we can tell the two visions apart because they're different colors. But I would argue that if you took the footage and change, uh, swap their colors, we would still be able to tell. You know, maybe not when they're just throwing each other into things, but when they're talking to each other, the he does play the both of them very distinctly. It doesn't feel like it's just the same. So yeah, and yeah, so. Exactly how does this lead into Doctor Strange 2? Does the show make a very clear path to that? I would say the the post credit scene, that is one quick thing I want to say. Please, if you haven't watched, there are two. There, there are two for this episode. There's a mid credit scene and there's a post credit scene. And that's, you know, the last two episodes of the show had, I guess those were mid credit scenes, weren't they? But this is the first one to have two, like the movie, you know, a number of the movies have had. So, please, if you haven't watched both of them, I will be discussing them. I don't want it spoiled. Please pause this video, go watch, go make sure you saw both of them, then, you know, you can come back here. But, the, the, okay, so I'm, I'm trusting you that anyone watching this now has, in fact, watched both post-credits. Yeah, both the mid-credits and post credit scene. The post credit scene with Wanda studying the Darkhold, reading the chapter about herself. You know, Agatha keeps accidentally telling Wanda, giving Wanda really good ideas. And it's the, you know, she's she's really arrogant. She's like, I can't believe, it, and jealous. She's, she's like, look at all that I can do. And I can't believe that you're so much more powerful than me. And I had to work for this stuff, you know? So she, yeah. And yeah, Wanda is sitting there looking, you know, with the with the uniform on, really loving the, the I knew they could make it work. I knew it. She, you know, comic book accurate Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff uniform. And, you know, we, we can see that she's both, you know, it's like how Doctor Strange would sleep whilst also studying, whilst like his, ah, uh, Astral, what's that what it's called? I, I know what it actually is, I, don't, I forget the word right now, I think it was his astral projected self. And some have pointed out, you know, he needed to sleep while studying. Wanda can go around and do things while she's studying, which, you know, she's more powerful than, than you know, that was something Agatha also said, more powerful than the 
Ah, one second. Sorcerer Supreme. Sorcerer Supreme. And let's see. Then, but but yeah, I feel like that leads. I could very much see how, you know, either she's going to try to do something that the Darkhold tells her how to do, and suddenly, like, Doctor Strange picks up that someone is doing something that he really has to stop, similar to how, you know, he picked up on Loki the moment he showed up on Earth again. Well, I guess within two minutes or so of him showing up on Earth again. And then there... Let's see. And, yeah, and another option is that Wanda, you know, will learn that Doctor Strange exists and go to him and try to maybe get his help for something related to the, the multiverse. Maybe a way to get... Maybe she wants to draw in Billy and Tommy from another part of the multiverse. Let's see. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, just briefly, I've seen some people say that Jimmy Woo... Dr. Lewis and Monica Rambeau couldn't have known what happened in the battle between Thanos and Wanda, or Thanos and Captain Marvel, in Endgame. I guess I don't need to say in Endgame. The way I see it is, people would talk about what happened in that battle. I mean, for one thing, we know that Peter Parker gets really excited about superhero stuff, records videos about it, and now Tony isn't around anymore to prevent him from posting it. Think about how in the past, before things were filmed all that much, people would still talk about what happened in sporting events, to the point where... Even their children would know a lot of details about a sporting event that took place before they were born that didn't exist on film. Superhero fights are sports on steroids. People would definitely talk about it, in my opinion. Now, honestly, imagine, imagine if you one day found out that superheroes existed in the real world are you really telling me that you wouldn't get really into figuring, you know, to, to keeping up on what happens with them? And, and yeah, I mean, keep in mind, I could understand if it was like the, you know, the brief conversation between Wanda and Thanos. I'm not sure she would say that to anyone. He's not alive to tell anyone. And no one was close enough to hear. But that's not what Monica... Dr. Lewis and Wu were talking about. They were talking about how well she fared in the fight against him. There's no way that not a single person was looking directly at Thanos when that happened. And I, I don't think very many people would be able to resist the temptation to tell others, did you see? Oh, you did? Oh my God, you... Look, Wanda walked up to him and just, you know, th there's no way they wouldn't be talking about it. It's too cool not to. Now, before this episode, we don't know why there is an actual TV signal from the sitcom reality. Now, I had already, you know, when I, some of these notes I voice typed before watching the episode. I, w I was already thinking it's probably that Wanda is basically doing it by reflex. And by the end of this episode, we don't have a clear answer. I, I think that was what was going on. I think it's like, uh, I don't know if I have a good metaphor for explaining it. Like, let's see. You know, so yeah, sometimes we do a thing and there is, there, there's, you know, some, it leads to something else and we maybe like, if we stopped and really thought about it, we could maybe figure out, oh, I guess if we do that, it's going to lead to this. But we weren't thinking about it. It just happened by reflex, you know. And, yeah, I don't know that I have a good metaphor. But anyway, the, the because, as, you know, apparently the TV signal was in there with the, the let's see, CB... M was that one? The the cosmic background radiation. Oh, CBR. Eh, whatever. I think you know what I'm talking about. In there was this TV signal, and I think it was yeah. See the way I see it, Wanda Wanda altered reality around her to be like a sitcom with all the rules. You have a laugh track. 
you have the characters behaving like it, you have everything looking like it. The way I see it, she maybe wasn't thinking about, you know, whether this was something that other people could pick up the TV signal of, but I do think that, you know, that's, I, I feel like it's just something that comes with, you know, if, if you alter reality, you know, if you, if you build a force field and within that force field, you alter reality to be like a TV show, yeah, the, the, there will be a TV signal that extends beyond that force field as just natural. You know, Agatha specifically, you know, Agatha and Wanda specifically both say Wanda barely even knows how she's, you know, she's doing it. And that's, you know, she, she yeah. And we don't know why upsetting stuff is edited out of the sitcom broadcast. In this episode, at least one of the people that she had been forcing to behave in the sitcom role, at least one of them says, when you let us sleep, we have your nightmares. So I figure it's that. She, you know, basically, she can't see it. If she does see it, she removes it. If she sees or hears something that doesn't work within the, the sitcom, and her nightmares is one of those things, and the, yeah. And is Wanda mentally ill and has multiple identities, or is she just pretending to sometimes be in sitcom mode? I think, I think I saw at least one of the Easter egg people do, you know, point to when she sends Monica flying, she, there's like this short moment of like realization. She's like looking at her hands like, what? What did I just, what did I just do, kind of thing. And I think there is, it, it appears that from that moment on, she was just playing along. She was, you know, she knew that there was something. And I mean, the first episode, when she tells Vision to save Do Mr. Hart, not Dr. Hart. He's a heart doctor. He's going to need... Yeah, I just, I just lost a bunch of viewers because a lot of people don't like Iron Man 3. Anyway, I think it's it's not perfect, but it has a lot of stuff going for it. Anyway, yeah. You know, Mr. Hart choking in the first episode. Wanda spotting the, the beekeeper, who we still don't know what happened to. I mean, I guess... And we still also, we didn't see Mr. Hart again after that first episode. After the ending of the first episode, we never see him again. And we don't, we don't see the, the guy in the hazmat suit. I don't know if, I mean, I guess ultimately, I think there's a chance that Mr. Hart was put to, to, you know, was like made to sleep all, all the time, like the children. And I think an argument could be made. I, at least I'm, I don't think we saw him when a bunch of them surround Wanda. If, if I missed that, then obviously disregard this part, but I think she probably just put him to sleep because they're, for, for the same reason she put the children to sleep. Which I still don't, I don't know exactly why. I guess, basically, well, no, yeah. I mean, Ralph Pietro said that the, the children were asleep so that they wouldn't be traumatized because she is traumatizing the adults. So that's probably it. And she, yeah, maybe she was afraid that whatever happened with Mr. Hart would happen again. So she, she just put him, yeah, and... The other thing, let's see, Mr. Hart, the sword guy with the hazmat suit, again, wouldn't have hated if this episode just had a brief shot of another sword agent finding him, but we don't see her kill any sword people. And people who enter the, the, I mean, we see by the end of the episode, 
the people who were inside the force field when she removed it are fine. They're, you know, I mean, it, it's not impossible that they'll be revealed to be mutants or something will happen to turn them into mutants or something, but they are still alive. And I think that is true of, of him as well. We still don't know why Wanda sometimes see Vision or Pietro as dead. I think it's that every so often the, the grief just comes up to the forefront. And the thing, you know, when, when, when she saw Vision dead, Monica had just reminded her that Ultron killed Pietro. What was the most recent thing? I, I forget exactly what was said right before she saw Ralph Pietro as dead Pietro as played by Evan Peters, but I think they were talking about some of her real-life trauma. Now, let's see. And, yeah. I swear. I will eventually get to the notes that I took during this episode, but yeah, not, not yet. Anyway, so on the show, you know, yeah. On, on the overall show, not, on, not, not, yeah. On the overall Disney Plus show WandaVision, rather than the sitcom WandaVision, Wanda is basically always in one of the stages of grief, grieving vision. I get, yeah, actually, I've, yeah, at this point I've always typed, we haven't seen her in acceptance the, acceptance, the fifth and final stage yet. We do basically see, you know, it, it seems like that's where she is when she, after she says goodbye to Vision, and as she's saying goodbye, she's, she's facing the fact that he's gone. So, yeah. But, let's see, yeah, since Endgame, she's basically been going back and forth between bargaining and denial, hence the sitcom world. You know, the, the, yeah, I, I don't think I need to, you know, bargaining, could he be back, and denial, he never left. And when she realizes who Monica is, she's in anger each time she encounters her from then on, during the encounters themselves. And in the episode where she wakes up without vision, she's in depression for much of the episode. Let's see. I already... Oh, actually, yeah, just briefly. So I already talked about how Agatha, on, you know, as, as the rest of the coven is, is trying to kill her, she legitimately does not seem to completely understand why she could even use the power that they accuse her of using, which is another thing that made me think, you know, there's someone hiding, giving her more power. And I really have to respect how well they did at making Agatha Harkness seem incredibly cruel and awful right from the start of Episode 8. I mean, she already was in Episode 7, but in Episode 8, they have a number of things that really tell us she's awful. She makes fun of the way Wanda speaks. She makes a bug crawl on Wanda's face. She holds a bird too tightly in her hands. It's clearly in pain. She makes fun of Wanda's traumatic memories. She's cruel to the twins. Yeah. Right, that was another, just briefly, we did not see the bunny Senor Scratch in this episode at all. And that, again, kind of makes me think, I, I think that's, you know, maybe maybe the next time we see Senor Scratchy, he will be in a humanoid form, and then, like, he'll maybe, yeah, and maybe, you know, maybe in Doctor Strange 2, and he'll talk to Wanda and say, ah, oh, I remember you or something, and Wanda's like, I've never seen you before, and then he turns into the bunny to, to remind her, something like that, and, yeah, and my money is still on... Mephisto, although now I can't say M M Ralph Fisto because I'm pretty sure Ralph is not Mephisto. He was under Agatha's control, not the other way around. And yeah, Catherine Hahn said to Seth Meyers that our minds will be blown by the final episode, and she was right. I don't think I've given enough praise to how how much they did to make Agatha look like a witch now that we know she is. The way her hair looks, her body language, her long flowing cap cape, all the glowing purple, the way she talks, the things she says. You know, she talked to Seth Meyers about, like, apparently early on, 
you know, if, when her kids would walk in on her practicing witch-like moves, they would be really embarrassed, but now they, they kind of liked it, so it, it, you know, they were won over by it by episode 8, I guess, or maybe she had already been able to see and show them episode 9, but yeah, she, she did an incredible job. I, again, like, I think it is worth just, like, you know, if you have Disney Plus, it's not like you're gonna end up scratching the the DVD. I I don't rewatch that much of my DVDs because I'm super worried about scratching them. But Disney Plus, it's there's no DVD to scratch. Go back and watch some of her scenes from the different episodes, so we can really all appreciate just how good a job she does. They all do such a great job. They they really the way they talk and the just the the smile and all the things just all the way through is is incredible like when i mean i already i knew from before the show started airing i had heard people theorizing agnes the nosy neighbors agatha harkness and i expected it to turn out that way but i didn't realize how intimidating and intense she would look and part of that is that when i thought of agnes i thought of the earlier you know until the end of episode seven, I thought of Agnes as the neighbor character, you know, who's, you know, quirky and, and, and you know, so I was really surprised. They, they did a really good job on, on making her incredibly convincing as the witch. And, right, so I guess when Agatha used magic during the magic show, she wanted to see what Wanda would do if the people realized she had magic powers. Since she already knows that everyone except for her is under Wanda's control, she's trying to see if Wanda would attack them, put them to sleep, etc. Maybe that was also... Let's see... Actually, yeah, let me really... I guess... Yeah, she, she wanted to... Let's see... Yeah, she can only absorb Wanda's magic if Wanda attacks her. So it wasn't to get Wanda to use her magic in a way that Agatha could absorb it. I think, yeah, she was she was seeing what she would do and maybe testing the extent of Wanda's powers. Because she already did know, I think she knew from, from right away that Wanda was the person who cast all the spells based on the way she interacts with her at first. And see, that again, that makes me think, we now know Wanda was never in Agatha's head. She said as much, and there's no reason for her to lie about that. She, she wouldn't gain anything by lying about that. So, the fact that Agatha was still encouraging Wanda to seduce Vision in episode one, to be on Dottie's good graces to, for school admissions in episode two, and after that, she didn't really need to push because at the end of episode two, Wanda is extremely pregnant. So that is, uh, yeah, either she was, I guess there's, yeah, let's, okay, so it's possible it's Mephisto, you know, tricking Agatha into the, the, so, so that, so the one will create the kids so that the kids will be parts of Mephisto's soul so he can take power. And it's also possible that Wanda, that Agatha thinks Wanda can create life and so she wants her to do it again. I mean, it gives, it gives someone for Agatha to threaten and that's extremely useful for her in this episode. So yeah, that might be what it is, but anyway. But yeah, you know, maybe the reason, maybe Agatha was trying to see what Wanda would do. That was why Ralph Yetro said, relax, it's not like your dead husband can die twice. I'm not sure what else she was hoping to get out of that. I'm not criticizing. Maybe there's something else I'm not seeing it. And let's see. I'm really glad this episode and episode eight don't really do the sitcom thing. It really wouldn't work for the tone. And it is the... Like it would, it would seem silly if they stuck to the the sitcom thing just because they said that that's what the show is. No, the show was a sitcom because Wanda made it into a sitcom, and Agatha drags her out of that, you know, in by by force. 
and Wanda doesn't go back to the sitcom reality, the, the, yeah, since, since it really wouldn't work, wouldn't make, keep making sense for her to do that, but Monica and Agatha could get her out of sitcom mode, and Agatha was able to do it in, in a, for a long time in a row. And let's see, yeah, so here, 35 minutes into the video, we finally get to the notes that I took while watching this episode. This is going to be like a 90-minute video, I think, if this is as good. Okay, anyway, my powers work out here, or did you forget? No, dear, I'm counting on it. And, yeah, really love, yeah, let me just blanket say I love all the action in this episode. There was none of it that I was like... Eh, no, all of it was amazing. But yeah, I really love the, the fight between Wanda and Agatha. And that's, you know, Agatha, she, she's, she doesn't know everything about, or, she, she's a little too arrogant and jealous of Wanda to realize that when, when Wanda does the, the ruins up in the, up in the air. But other than that, Agatha has a pretty good idea of how to manipulate Wanda. Wanda doesn't real, you know, she just, she sees her, her 10 year old boys being strangled, you know, the, the, about to be hanged by Agatha. So she reacts, she, she goes into mama bear mode. You know, she doesn't stop and think, she lured me out here, didn't she? What is she thinking? What is she planning? How do I maneuver out of it? Yeah, so also, I keep, almost saying, I'm going to go ahead and say it now, because I didn't make the note of, when Wanda and Agatha are up in the air, Vision, like, kind of, you know, kind of, like, hold, holds the boys, and it's like, you know, there's, there's this sense that he, he trusts that Wanda knows what she's doing up there. That's why he doesn't fly up there and help her. And I think... Maybe it's because they know each other so well. Maybe Wanda put that thought in his head, since we know that's a that's a thing she can do. She can put thoughts in people's heads. I also just briefly want to say, I'm not sure we've seen her turn invisible or disappear like she does in this episode before, but we kind of knew it must be happening because when, excuse me, right at the start of Age of Ultron, right before the title comes up, Tony... You know, he's, he sees the vision, then he walks up to, to the scepter, and we see that Wanda was standing, like, right behind him. And, yeah, it's just like, I mean, the, the, well, okay, the suit in sentry mode is a little further away, I guess. Maybe that, but, but when someone walks up behind you, you kind of, like, you, you get, like, a sense, and you turn around to see who it is. You know, but he couldn't tell there was someone behind him. So that's, you know, that's also, she, she wouldn't be that effective as putting, if she has to be, like, I mean, she almost has to touch them. Like, there's there's not a lot of range. I think this is maybe the, the furthest, like, if this is her, if this is her hand and this is the head of the person she's putting thoughts into, she always has to get really close. That would be extremely detrimental if she couldn't also make others have trouble seeing her or make, turn partial invisible or something. Now, let's see, and yeah, Agatha starts to absorb Wanda's life force through her red wiggly woos. I'm, I'm sorry, that's what they're called now. It's, I, I, you know, I, I haven't checked the Marvel wiki, the, the, what is it, wiki, uh, dot Marvel or whatever it's called, anytime recently, but I really hope someone did change it to, you know, in the MCU they are, her, her chaos magic, a.k.a. Red Wiggly Woos. Anyway, Wanda threw a car at Agatha, since that way Agatha can't absorb her powers, so she's using similar tricks to how... As, yeah, same trick as how she attacked Iron Man in Civil War, and perhaps taking a page out of the Hulk's book in Age of Ultron as, as well. But yeah, you know... Uh, ah, what's his face? Hawkeye. It, I, I gotta say, it's it's kind of weird to see Wanda do so much without Hawkeye having to talk her into it, considering that in Age of Ultron and Civil War, that was, you know, he, he had to do that. And anyway, I'm kidding. So the, the, 
but but yeah, you know, Hawkeye fires all the the arrows that Iron Man basically does have to stop. If he doesn't stop them, we we don't know exactly what they're gonna do. But I mean, if Hawkeye has an arrow that can knock out the Helicarrier just like that, I I think there's a chance he has something that could work against Iron Man as well. I I feel like Hawkeye is the kind of person who would try to figure out if my teammates turn on me. How would I best defend against them, you know? Anyway, yeah, so the, the, let's see. But, but yeah, you know, and here, she, yeah, she didn't have Hawkeye to, to, but, but yeah, you know, Agatha didn't see it coming. Okay, now I just really briefly have to, to reference, there's this, I, yeah, I don't even know if it's still online because I think it made was it on College Humor's website and that got like like if I last time I typed in collegehumor.com it redirected to the their YouTube page. Anyway, I want to say it's Julie Lipetit who did this like this brief comic where like you know this is right after uh, let's see Superman and Wonder Woman, yeah, have just realized that Batman has a plan for how to take out any of his allies if they turn on him and start attacking him. And they're like shocked. And then I, f I forget which of them says it, but one of them says, well, what if, what if you're the one who turns bad? How, you know, do you have a plan that we can use to, you know, against you? And he says, yeah, of course. Can we see it? Sure. And, and, you know, he answered that, and, and, like, I think it's like a document that you have to open, and then it just says, run. Oh. The, the O oh was the reaction of Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, sorry, and Superman, not, I, I personally love that comic. Anyway. Let's see. Yeah, and, you know, under the car, we just see the witch's boots, like in The Wizard of Oz, really nicely done. And White Vision lands near Wanda. I really, I am so, they're so good at this in the MCU. Making sure that even in a big battle, we get some nice individual moments between, you know, I'm really glad that Agatha had been, you know, put, you know, she's not, we don't know exactly where she is, but she appears to still be alive. You know, it's only her boots that are still there. And then White Vision lands, and we know that it's Hayward's tool. Wanda has no idea. You know, and, and, yeah, just, you know, lands near her and, like, you know, put, puts, I th yeah, I think it's, it, yeah, just really quick. I know Corona and all, I washed my hands since last time I was out. I will wash them carefully again before the next time I go out. But just, you know, he, like, he puts a hand on her face and then the other hand. And, and it seems like, oh, it's like physical affection. And then he starts trying to crush her skull. I, I saw some someone say like it, like it was a cantaloupe or something. I just, yeah. And the noise, I mean, in reality, of course, they're not going to hurt the actress. But that noise, and I think there was a little visual indication that he was, like, making progress at cr just, holy crap, that was horrifying. And just, yeah. And, and, you know, as he's doing, he says, and I was told you were powerful. Just, and we get some vision on vision acting, and it's hot. I mean, with the explosion and all. Agatha returns. White Vision is clearly unharmed by the explosion. It's it's actually very T two like as a oh well that's slowing up. Nope. And let's see. Well, Wanda, this is awkward. Your ex and your boyfriend at the same party. Who are you going to choose? Every single line that Agatha Harkness has in this show needs to be framed on a wall. It's it's so good. That's such a great, like, I mean, she, Agatha saw it. She saw that White Vision tried to crush her head. And she's like, oh, your ex showed up. Just, wow. And, and I feel like... You know, it, it makes sense for her character as well. It's obviously it's it's 
the kind of that we, we like when a villain is really cruel and, and taunts the hero. But it does also make sense for her. Like, she's... I mean, I'm not saying that she deserves a lot of her empathy, but if we try to see things from her point of view, she's been going around for, let's see, 337? Uh, 27 years, at least. And going around, you know, getting better and better at magic. And then suddenly, one day, she sees this massive amount of spells activated all at the same time. And she's like, this is someone I need to learn from. And she goes there, and like she said, you're using them to make breakfast for dinner. She's like, insulted. You know, I mean, it's, it's like if the, the, let's see. It's, it's, ah, crap, let me, I'll, I, I swear I won't spend forever trying to think of, but just, let's see, it's like if you, yeah, it's, it's like if you, if you had like, um, ah, never mind. Let's see, it's, it's. Okay, I guess maybe I should just give. Oh. Let's yeah. Let's say that you had the you had the technology for like solar panels, and instead of you know spreading that technology out so that we can move in move towards green energy and away from fossil fuels, instead. You, like, you put a bunch of them on, like, on an, on the roof of your own house and right around so that you personally could get the power you needed for your house, but you didn't share it. You didn't share the technology. You know, it's, it's insulting. It's like, I can't believe, that, you know, from, from her point of view, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying that it would be a good thing for Wanda to be going around and, you know, clearly Agatha is does some really awful things with her powers and we see Monica still near Ralph Vietro and he's preventing her from leaving using his Quicksilver powers I don't mind that we didn't see exactly what happened between when he caught her Snoopers gonna snoop you know and and this scene because this scene answers it you know every so often she'll try to get away he'll speed up in front of her and yeah, he just did the, like, he, he just, like, taps her, just like, you know, tiny. But because he can put all that speed behind it, she goes flying across the room, you know. And, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that Monica Rambeau, even in the comics, has powers that can really be particularly useful in that situation. You know, actually, wait, no. No, because she absorbs the power. She absorbs the bullets later. But that was basically by reflex, and her reflex maybe wasn't quite fast enough because he's using super speed. You know, it makes sense. They, I love how the MCU manages to always match someone's powers against someone else. You know, they, they, it's, yeah. I, I just in the weeks leading up to doing this video, I rewatched all, all four MCU movies that Wanda is in. And yeah, they have really great, you know, all, all four of them do a really great job pitting characters against each other who have to use their abilities in creative ways to counter each other. Now, let's see. And really loving how both visions are using their powers to fight each other. Like, there's one point where, like, I think it's the white vision tries to, I guess he's like trying to grab regular vision's arm or something. And regular vision, you know, like makes his arm intangible, so it's, it gets stuck there. So then now White Vision is down one arm, but then White Vision punches the other arm, like inside, like the the regular Vision's chest or something, and you know, like by you know basically by reflex. Yeah, I guess he's so fast that regular Vision didn't have time to stop being intangible or make. Yeah, and anyway. That's obviously extremely painful for Vision, so just really, really great job.
and let's see. yeah, and he has Wu, but Wu is able to grab a cell phone and then gets, you know, put by himself because Haywood is a villain in, you know, a piece of fiction with it's just. They're, they're literally never going to... I, I don't think it would have hurt to have Wu say, I can't believe he actually left me alone. You know, the, the, the way that Ant-Man and the Wasp had Scott Lang point out, this, this is terrible disguise. We don't look like other people. We look like ourselves at a baseball game. You know, just, anyway. Did we see Wu be caught by the others last time? Hmm. I'm not 100% certain that we did see it, but I'm not... I don't know that we need to see it. I think it's, yeah. And Wu, yeah, Wu threatens, hey, we're, you know, they're coming within the hour, and then he takes the lock of handcuffs, and they're like, I was hoping you could get here inside the hour. <laughs> I really, I love Wu, and I'm, I mean, I guess Ant-Man 3 is gonna be, I, I'm really looking forward to it. He, you know, by the end of this show, he's much more he, he wields more authority than earlier on, and he's he's still this 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 sweet individual with you know. But yeah, so so that's that could come into play. Maybe I guess there's a chance that maybe he'll help Scott next time, since he did you know he he basically he was like I'm 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 sorry this is my duty I have to do this it's the law. He wasn't like, you're such a bad guy and I can't wait to put you behind bars. Now. And yeah, this episode has action on the level of an MCU movie, which is the first time for the show. I'm not really complaining, just noticing. Let's see. And yeah, Wanda walks around and Agatha attacks her and Agatha confirms the internet theory that the book she has in her cellar, and now she's, you know, let's see, yeah, I, th I think she had it when, when she was talking to, to Wanda, is the Darkhold. It's your destiny to destroy the world, and that's such a great, is it this world, as in the rest of the uh, multiverse will be fine? Is it the world as in everything, including the other parts of the multiverse? Yeah, and it, it is, like, there is some chance that she's going to, yeah. And Agatha wakes up Dottie, who tells, you know, her name is Sarah, and her eight-year-old is locked in her room. Just, yeah, and, and you know, Wanda's like, no, this isn't, you know, why are you making her say this or something? And Agatha says, she's your meat puppet, I just cut her strings. Neat, neat reference to, you know, I mean, Ultron is an important part of Wanda's backstory, and he was also all about, no, you know, there are no strings on me. And Agatha cuts the strings of all of them, and they're, like, closing in on Wanda and, like, surrounding her. Very threatening. I mean, I don't, ultimately, the fact that she didn't, like, like, they don't really physically attack her or something. I, th I think that would have been a little too much, but the, yeah, them, them closing in on her, very, very threatening looking, very intimidating. Let's see, and, and, and that's very, you know, again, Agatha, she's really good at finding other people's weaknesses. She, she, the, the, th a good, an, an effective way to attack Wanda, she realized, is to confront her with what she's been doing to the people of Westview. Because that's something that, you know, Wanda kept telling herself that it was fine. I guess maybe that was what, yeah, when, when Ralph Yetro said, I think you handled the ethical considerations as well as you could. She, that, that was basically, Agatha was basically seeing, is this something that might, that Wanda maybe feels guilty about? 
this is my man cave, favorite place, favorite place to chillax. And what is this thing? It you know while while the missus is stirring up trouble. I really hope we're gonna see more of 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 Ralph Boner because he is a very. And see this again just tells me that the MCU, just in a lot of ways. They tend to do things better than the X-Men movies, the Fox X-Men movie. Because I like him so much more here than I liked him as Peter in those movies. Just, anyway, and Monica realizes that, you know, Pietro owns the house and his real name is Ralph Boner. And he, and he laughs when she says the name. And Monica releases Ralph from the spell. She could tell that the it was the uh, what's it called uh, necklace that he was wearing because of her ability to see energy, and at the end of episode seven, I think seven, yeah, the post credit scene there, we saw that Monica found the one of the, an entrance to the basement. And she looked at of Agatha, and she looked at the the purple energy, and her eyes glowed glowed purple with that energy. You know, that's that's I I'm not 100 percent certain if that's how it is in the comics, but clearly in the MCU, similar to how when Thanos used the gauntlet, used one of the one of the Infinity Stones in the gauntlet, one or more, they would glow so you could tell. You know, this is what he's using now, and. So far, it appears that Photon, I'm guessing that's what Monica Lambeau is going to go by, when she looks at, when she uses her, her vision to, to pick out energy, to, to see, yeah, yeah, to see energy, her eyes will glow in the same color that the energy is. That was what happened right after she got through the force field and she could see the energy and happened at the end of... Yeah, the, the post credit scene of episode 8, 7. And then it happened again here when she, you know, she she knew, I have to, well, actually, yeah, I guess we don't know if she look if she knows what to look for, or she's just, like, saying, you know, focusing on, okay, I have to see where's some, where's nearby energy. But she could tell that his necklace was the, you know, because her eye glowed purple again with the, and she tears it off, and yeah, very, very clever. Again, it's exactly that's that's how she would fight that. She she needs to figure out what's you know. Once she realizes that he's a regular person that Agatha is using, then it's just a matter of figuring out how is Agatha controlling him. You know, if he wasn't, if that wasn't the case, if he was a magic user on. Some level, you know, then, yeah. And Wanda is confronted with all the people inside Westview that she's hurting, and it ends up overwhelming her, so she starts using her powers on them. But it was clearly by accident. I really, I, I think it was the, ah, crap, I'm sorry. Bad memory. I do not have a gamote. Ah, uh, not always, at least. Many people are saying this. The, the... I'm sorry, I, I simply don't remember, but one of the Easter egg, you know, was it? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I simply do not remember. But, yeah, one of them, he, he pointed out that it, it's really great how this episode doesn't, it, it doesn't, it, it's, it doesn't just, you know, ignore all the pain that Wanda has caused with the, the Westview anomaly. You know, she gets directly confronted with it. And she never actually says, that wasn't me. You know, she, I, I mean, it is, there is some chance that she's going to be the villain of Doctor Strange 2. That all the trauma leads her to that. Because that is a thing. For her whole life, she has experienced a lot of trauma. She's tried to escape it using sitcoms, and this was essentially the ultimate collapse of that. 
you know, she had to say goodbye to her twins, to her husband. She, you know, she, she walks out of Westview with, like, the hoodie up, and she's, like, almost trying to hide from people because she knows that they resent her because of what she did to them. And I, I, they did such a great job on this. I've seen, yeah, I already said I'm spoiling the X-Men movies. Dark Phoenix does a terrible job. Heh. <laughs> The movie and Last Stand, both both versions of, I guess, espe actually, yeah, especially the the the, the newer version, the, the movie called Dark Phoenix. I have nothing against Sophie Turner. I think she did as well as she could have, considering how badly the character was written. But so, for some reason, you know, Jean will be basically be normal Jean for a while. And then suddenly she'll start attacking cops and military. You know, I'm, film brain is the one who pointed this out. And then when I watch this, like, yeah, that's what the what is going on? I, I forget if I watched this review before or after, but anyway, I agree with him. I'm not trying to take credit for that observation. And here they have wanted to do terrible things, but we understand why. She's not just suddenly randomly doing bad things, you know, and yet she's. She's caused an incredible amount of pain, you know, she, the, the, let's see, I guess each episode, let's see, a, num a number of the episodes of this show correspond to one day. So, let's see, the first three are a day each. The fourth one is set during the first three. Let's see, five, six, seven are each. Um, a day, I think, and then the eighth one, I'm not sure that's supposed to be an entire day, but, and certainly this one isn't, yeah, anyway, yeah, crap, I already lost count again, uh, let's, yeah, let's go with like a week or something, she has been giving these people her nightmares, and she's been forcing them to live, to, to act out the role that they excuse me, that, that she, that would fit with the sitcom, and, you know, Norm was an extreme pain, extreme anxiety when Vision woke him up, and then, you know, you see also Dottie as, you know, Sarah is very, yeah, you know, Wanda caused an incredible amount of pain here, she really didn't mean to, and it's it's this thing. I I really appreciate they're not shying away from that, you know. They are they they're not pretending that she wasn't responsible for pain in Age of Ultron. Lagos, she did what she could, but ultimately, I I mean I I think you know Steve basically says it was more on him than Wanda. At the start of the you know. Yeah, at the start of the Lago scene, one of the first things she says is, you guys know I can move things with my mind, right? She's like, she's too arrogant. She's too sure of herself. And that ends up, you know, clearly she was not quite, yeah, you know, the, the I think it, it's both on her and on Steve. Steve should have clocked the, the, the bombs immediately. And she should have been, yeah, she should, yeah, anyway, you know, she, she usually, she's not really trying to do evil, but she does end up accidentally doing evil things, and, yeah, anyway, and, and the, and then I, I think it was Miss, Miss Hart, if you won't let us go, Please let us die, and it's just this is this is so, and and then like for, and and then you know Wanda's like I will, I will let you go. You know, for a second I was like, no, please don't. For yeah, it, it's they they really I once again I've I've watched. You know, I've now watched. This is the only episode of the of the mini series that I've only watched once. 
I just in the last month rewatched all of the last five weeks, whatever. Just rewatched the four movies that she's in. The the they they have done an incredible job on her character. There's you know there was some writing on the wall from right away. There you know the the way that she 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 tries her best or she think she thought that by stopping Tony by stopping the Avengers the world would be better off. She legitimately believed that you know. She she does what she thinks is best, but she ends up causing a lot of pain, and this show really forces her to confront that. I, I really appreciate that. And Agatha says, heroes don't torture people. And Wanda, you know, starts to remove the, the force field barrier so that they can go. And... Yeah, and, and you know, some of some of the sword people, Hayward's people get in. Let's see. They're doing a really good job on following up on all the plot strands that have been set up in, in this miniseries up to this point. And the visions fight again. It reminds me somewhat of when Iron Man fights Ultron, you know the the one on one fight, the the bar, the pit, that I can't my, I can't make up my mind if I want to say the bit or the part. So it came out the the part the, and now I can't say it wrong. Yeah, amazing, amazing. It came out as. Pit and Bart instead of anyway the part where that, that ends with Ultron telling Iron Man, you know, to go stop Doctor Banner. And and also somewhat reminds me of the ending of actually yeah never mind I did write it. anyway. And Vision and the twins are being torn apart by Wanda removing the force field. Incredibly horrifying visual. These are ten-year-olds, and we're seeing like chunks of their body missing. I don't know how this gets away with the PG-13, but I'm glad that they're. Wow, and and the, yeah, this this show has shown me some of the most horrifying things I've seen in my life, and I've been watching horror movies for twenty years now. So yeah, that's. If you know this is this is a good show for nightmare fuel. If you anyway, and yeah, save Westview or save your family, and at least for now she does choose her family. Let's see. And and the family hugs very very sweet, and I really like the the you know when they when they get in like an attack stance and you know someone pointed out it's a lot like. The Incredibles and yeah, very nice little which you know they they went there there was a showing of the Incredibles in in the movie theater in the Halloween episode. Now let's see yeah, and Agatha attacks and when Wanda blocks, you know let's. See. What's that say? Yeah. yeah, you know, she's she's trying to protect her family from Agatha since that's a thing. Agatha keeps attacking her family, you know. And you know, Wanda's life force is drained and the 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 color and the makeup and I think yeah, even even some of her face starts to get just horrifying. Just yeah. So, so yeah, this is exactly what Agatha was hoping to make happen all along. She wanted to force Wanda to use her powers in a big enough way in front of her that she could drain the power, especially if, you know, yeah, if Wanda attacks Agatha directly. My programming directive is to destroy Vision. Which, I mean, if he's that devoted to that, I think he should be going around and telling kids 
it is okay to sit that close to the TV. I'm sorry, that's a terrible joke. But yeah, Vision Fighting Vision is somewhat reminding me of the climax of Man of Steel, but I'm liking this a lot better. And I did originally like the climax of Man of Steel. You know, when I when I first saw that movie, I thought it, was, it had some good stuff, and then I watched a bunch of videos talking about all the bad stuff, and now I don't like it as much. And And I'm I'm glad I watched those videos. I, I really don't wanna be defending there's some there's some real issues with that movie. Uh let's yeah, real quick. I'm not gonna sum up all the bad stuff, but Maggie Mae Fish Renegade Cut and Folding Ideas did some excellent videos on Man of Steel. Now yeah, and Vision, you know, yeah, Vision pulls a Kirk on White Vision, confusing the robot brain with a logical question. I, I quite like that, and it, it 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 does make a lot of sense. I mean, you know, it it is. He he says my programming directive is to destroy Vision, as in there's no emotional attachment here. I don't hate you. I've been programmed to destroy Vision, and then Vision Vision says, technically, I'm not Vision. You know. Let's see. Boys, handle the military. Mommy will be right back. It's so good. And loving seeing the twins using their powers heroically. You know, the... I think he is called... Yeah. Speed takes... Let's see. Did... Yeah, I think Wiccan, like, basically... Did, did he... Did he, like, temporarily slightly mind control them so they wouldn't start firing? And then speed... It, Excellent teamwork. You know, then Speed runs around grabbing all their guns. And let's see. Yeah, and then then Haywood tries to shoot. I mean, I mean at this point, I'm not I I guess it's because he feels like he can't control them, he can't make them into a weapon, so he wants to take them out instead, but at this point it's almost too cliche of a villain. He's shooting a ten year old. Just, anyway, yeah, so the, the, yeah, Monica, I mean, I, I'm not sure she even knew that that would happen. She just stands in the way and, you know, her powers are able to, yeah, I, I, I bet Vision is like rolling in his grave. He's like, that's, I didn't, I didn't know that there was, I don't know, I, I still don't mind Pietro's death in in Age of Ultron. I I think it you know basically he chose to sacrifice himself for Hawkeye and for the the kid, which there's a deleted scene where he actually I don't think he interacts directly with the kid, but he interacts with the kid's mother. You know we do see both the the kid and the mother in the the final movie, but they have an an appearance in this deleted scene anyway. But yeah, you know. Monica, she's like absorbing the power, and that's, as far as I understand in the comics, that's her thing. She absorbs power, and the the reason a bullet can kill is basically the 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 power of it. You know, it's it's not like it would be a different thing if she like ah, what's a good let's let's say she was poisoned. I'm not sure she could handle that, but the the reason that a bullet kills you is because of the the Force is maybe a better word to use here. The force with, with with which it hits you. I mean, you can touch a bullet with your bare fingers and it'll be fine. It's only the force, and she absorbs that. So, it's, and you know the and and speed the the cool twin, not the Dorcasaurus Rex, is now wearing the shades and hat of one of the military people, somewhat like Peter in Days of Future Past. Although his shades were his own. I could overanalyze and say that they probably wouldn't fit him, but I quite like the visual. It's and it's it's a neat little homage to Days of Future Past. Nice tricks, I like you too. And you know Hayward is like trying to flee because child murder isn't going to look great in on on his resume, and like he he starts you know he's he's trying to start start the jeep and then the uh, the van. Rams in you know Dr. Lewis rams the van that she was you know that 
She was driving towards Wanda's home last we saw her. And, you know, whether it was Wanda or Agatha preventing or slowing down Vision in the, in the van. Regardless of which of them it was, they're not doing that anymore. They're not focusing on that anymore. So she's been driving, uh, you know, I, I don't think, I forget if they moved particularly far away from, I mean, they started fighting right in front of Agatha's house. I don't think they've moved that far, but anyway, basically once, you know, big stuff started happening, even if it moved, I mean, Darcy can like look up, you know, look in the sky. It's not a bird or a plane. It's a better movie than most Superman movies. It, it's better filmed entertainment than most Superman video movies. And she's like, oh, there, you know, there's, there's Hayward. That's, uh, you know, I mean, she's, she's basically looking around like, how can I be, who can I best help with, with, you know, and then she sees, and, and she's probably like, you are not escaping this. That is not a thing that's going to happen here, buddy. And, uh, you know, the, the, so yeah, she, yeah, I, I, one of the, one of the Easter egg people pointed out, Dr. Luz only gets one line in this entire episode, but, you know, Kat Dennings makes the most of it. Enjoy present! It's just, that's that so good. Just, just like, and I agree, that, that could have been just an enjoy present, but it's not enjoy present, it's just. <laughs> and, and the, 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 that person in the YouTube video went on to say, we have to see more Darcy Lewis. That is just, that's a thing. And I looked up, I mean, right now she's not on the Wikipedia page for Thor, Thor 4, which I, I really hope they find a way to, to work her into, because cause she's, she's such a fun character. Anyway, but, but yeah, you know, as usual, she gets to do something heroic in the finale. You know, in Thor 1, let's see, isn't she one of the, I think she is right there with, Selvig warning people to to get you know to to get out of the yeah because it's dangerous because you know yeah the the climactic the part of the climactic fight that's on earth you know and in the second one she helps with the ah uh, what are they called the uh, yeah I I do not remember what they're called I I do love both Thor <laughs> Both of the first two Thor movies. I almost said both of the Thor movies as if the third one doesn't exist. I like the first two better than the third. And I've gone into why in my video on the third. So, yeah. You know, in the, in the second one, she was going around with the, those, the, the big, long sticks that, you know, they, they hammer in. And that helps use the, the teleporting power thing. So, you know, yet again, she's, she's heroically, she's risking her life to make sure that the, the, the things turn out, you know, that, yeah, she's, she's protecting people in all three cases because Hayward is, yeah, I am glad. I, I think that was also at least one of the Easter egg people said, such a relief that he didn't turn out to be Mephisto in disguise. He's just, he's a jerk. I think one of them said, but he's not Mephisto. That, I, I appreciate that as well. And the two visions talk about the ship of Theseus, if it continues to be the true ship of Theseus. And, you know, yeah, it, it works. It's, it's, such an, it's such a great intelligent, because that's what Vision does. He doesn't, he doesn't just go around like punching people. He tries to use strategy in every situation. You know, every every time there is a fight or there might be a fight, he does what he judges to be the most strategic way to do it. You know, he when he's talking right after he's been created and the Avengers are not sure if they can trust him or not, he admits. You know, he he tells them, "You're right." Part of me is Ultron. I don't know exactly, you know, I don't have all the answers, but we have to go now. And he picks up Thor's hammer, which, you know, let's see. I mean, Jarvis knew how big of a deal that would be. So, yeah, you know, he's not going around trying to threaten them 
into helping him or something, like some heroes might, he he proves to them that he's worthy. And you know, when yeah, and when he faces Ultron, he goes in and removes the the he he removes Ultron from the net, or yeah, he he yeah. And the the let's see the the airport battle, he he also you know he tries to block the path of Stephen Bucky when they run towards the, you know, and he didn't know that Wanda was going to be able to lift, you know, hold it up in the air so that they could get past just in time, and let's see, yeah. Anyway, you know, he tries to be, yeah, and that's that's exactly the right way to go up against White Vision, because if White Vision is there to destroy Vision, I mean, if he's destroying the wrong Vision, then that's not, that's, you know, that's outside of his programs. And, and Vision, you know, un unlocks White Vision's memories, which, yeah, and and we don't know, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. I, I don't know when the next time we're going to see Paul Bettany in the MCU, but I... It's it's great because I I I'm so glad I am so glad that it didn't just end with you know killing White Vision and then no no now we don't you know it's it's kind of like with with Gamora and Loki they they are so good at this they are so good at taking characters that seem like they died or maybe did die but then here's a way that we can have some interesting character growth because Gamora. Gamora in Endgame is not the same Gamora, but she is willing to help the good guys. And there's, you know, and then she's gone at the end of the movie and the, the Guardians want to find her. And, yeah, they just, they do such a good job. And I, it's, I know that some people are going to say, well, then death has no permanence. To be fair, there's a lot of characters in the MCU that have died. You know, I, th I think quite a few of them have been villains, but... A lot of them died and have not come back, you know. But yeah, like, what is next for White Vision? He's basically, he doesn't have feelings for Wanda, but he knows everything that happened to the, well, yeah, to him originally. And the Mind Stone is gone, and yeah, it's it's really interesting. I, I don't know exactly what... I, I guess there's a there's a decent chance he's going to end up being an ally again, but it definitely doesn't. I I and and yeah, as far as I remember in the comics as well, when White Vision comes back and doesn't have the the personality and and you know he and Wanda do split up and that's kind of sort of what happens here, you know. So and and that's the thing, like if Wanda and Vision. Are going to have to work together sometime in the future and he doesn't have feelings for her and she's like I mean the Mind Stone is gone and you don't remember actually yeah no he does remember but they didn't they didn't spend the, the you know the things that happened between her and Vision on this show didn't happen to White Vision so you know she might still have feelings for him but he doesn't he can't really return those as yeah really really low and and this is the kind of thing you can only do if you have you know fiction where something unrealistic happens i really i'm so fed up with people saying that's not very realistic realism is, bo is boring if you want realism don't go for fiction that's it there's plenty of non-fiction out there there is so much if you love reality and re and and realism go nuts there's like read read wikipedia watch documentaries but don't bring down the fiction that the other that the rest of us can enjoy just because you don't like when something is unrealistic anyway. And let's see. Yeah, so basically Vision manages to convince White Vision that White Vision is the real Vision. And then yeah, and, and he goes off. Maybe it's because he can't self-terminate, maybe it's because he needs to think things out, think things through think things throughout 
and Wanda reappears behind Agatha and puts scary images in her head like she did in Age of Ultron. She she really hasn't done that all that much since then, but, you know, it's, yeah, it, it was extremely effective in Age of Ultron, and for a little bit, it's extremely effective here, and, and the, you know, like, Agatha at first, I think her fear is real. I think she was legitimately afraid of what was going to happen in, in this, and, you know, Wanda points out, see, the difference between you and me is, you did this on purpose, and, again, it's such a great... I, I'm really glad that it's not just, you know, these characters attacking each other over and over. That there's this, you know, that there are character moments and they, they, yeah. And the other witches come back to life as zombies. Really, really scary looking. And one of these very people pointed out, in, in, ah, what's it called? What if we are getting Marvel zombies? So this is another hint towards that, like, Far From Home also had. And then the witches reach their hands towards Wanda. Told you so. And they put Wanda where Agatha was. And Wanda gets the, the red hair dress, headdress, that Agatha... Uh, yeah, you know, the, the Scarlet Witch head. This is before she gets the uniform. And Agatha promises she will help Wanda with West, Westview if she gives her the Scarlet Witch powers. And then after she does actually say, so the thing about her deal is, yeah, do not trust MCU Agatha Harkness. She is not your friend. She is not telling you the truth. But the, yeah, so so basically she, yeah, she said, you know, about her deal, once the spell is cast, you can't change it. And that's, I don't think that did pay off in this. So I wonder if that's maybe going to be a setup for something in Doctor Strange that some um, anyway and, and and certainly it does say there is no more WandaVision you know and and I really I, I don't some some people have joked that maybe there would be more than one season and I think I've seen some people who did action who who did think that there would be multiple seasons of the show I sincerely doubt that I'm not saying that we won't get more mini series involving Wanda but it's not going to be WandaVision and it's not I'm I would be very surprised if another sitcom thing again. Anyway, and yeah, Wanda and Agatha fight in the sky, and Vision joins in. This is an incredibly action-packed finale. I, I think the first 30 minutes of the 40-minute running time of the finale, although there is also you know, opening logos and previously on, but the first 30 minutes of the of the 40 minutes that the finale is is almost non-stop action with you know there, there's these little character moments in between but tons of action and and Wanda keeps attacking at but even though it keeps draining her life force but she also some of her attacks seem to miss Agatha and then we realize she set up the ruins and it's 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 so well done it's yeah and Agatha really has a great maniacal laugh or cackling or, yeah, cackle. And, let's see. I guess if she was cheating on Ralph, it would be the cuckoo cackle. This world you made will always be broken, just like you. And then Agatha tries to use her powers, but can't. And she she tries like twice, and it's somewhat reminiscent of Loki at the end of the Avengers trying to take over Iron Man's brain with the scepter. And also, you know, Iron Man with Thanos at the end of Endgame, you know. And as, as one of the Easter egg people pointed out. And... Yeah, Wanda reveals she had cast the runes up in the sky. And that's why Agatha now can't use her powers. Let's see. I bet Agatha feels pretty stupid about telling her that now. Thanks for the lesson. And and it is, again, like, it's it makes sense for Agatha's character. This is who she is. She I mean, I think also a big part of it is it seems like she's been alone. I feel like if she wasn't alone, she would have brought ca the cavalry. She would she wouldn't have gone alone against the Scarlet Witch. If she had any other choice, but she's been alone for 327 years, and finally she finds this magic, 
and she's like, I can't believe you're doing this is what you're doing with all this power, and this is how easy this power comes to you. And she's like, she can't believe it. So, so yeah, she's like, ruins. What? Didn't you know? You know, just it's it's so good. It makes perfect sense for for her character. And let's see. right, and yeah, I I know you know some people really don't like that in the MCU. You know, often the hero will fight against basically a mirror version of themselves. I don't really have much of a problem with it. I just really like that so frequently the fights are fairly even. I really feel like there's way too many, like, for example, X-Men movies where, like, think about how OP Toad is, or maybe just, I guess maybe it's more that the, the most of the X-Men are completely incompetent in the first X-Men movie, because they... He he takes out like three of them within like three seconds or something. It's it's insane, and then in the MCU it's more even fights, and I I really appreciate that. But yeah, Agatha for sure, in in a number of ways is very similar to Wanda. And now Wanda drains Agatha's life force. Really loving seeing Wanda in comic accurate Scarlet Witch uniform. I guess this means the Halloween costume was foreshadowing and. I mean the the let's see and cer excuse me certainly if that is the case then you know that might mean that in the future Speed and Wiccan will return and will wear their comic accurate costumes or or you know slightly you know that they, they yeah they do on the MCU they they make them more practical it's not just spandex and. Again, I love comic books. I'm not. I'm not saying it's bad in the comics. I'm saying it wouldn't work in the MCU. And you know, so so yeah. In the in the MCU, they might wear something that looks somewhat similar, but instead of spandex, it's like uh, how's the word? Like like uh, uh, not not Kevlar, but you know, something in the you know, like tactical. Yeah. And that's the, yeah, I mean, basically, is the the comic book accurate uniform she has at the end of this episode, it looks like the, the, the front of it is this, this sort of body armor kind of thing, providing at least some protection. And let's see, I do appreciate that she is wearing pants instead of the bare legs that, I'm pretty sure in the comics it's like bare legs or maybe like nylon or something. I, th I really think Elizabeth Olsen has been put through enough for the, the sake of her character looking really hot. And I, I guess this actually, this might be the, the standard from now on. She's not going to be wearing the, the corset that she's been wearing up to now. And I, yeah, I, I really think she put in her time. It's okay to retire that. Let's see, the end of Age of Ultron, I think it's, yeah, she wears it several times in Civil War. She wears it in Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, I honestly, I think it's it's okay to, to retire that and and give her a... I, I hope this is more comfortable. It looks more comfortable, but I don't know. They, they put the, the women of the MCU in such uncomfortable, you know, because it would make them look, you know, really attractive. I, I, I'm all for toning it down and giving them something a bit more com Anyway. Oh no, you don't know what you've done. I'll give you the role you wanted, the nosy neighbor. You don't know what you unleashed. You'll need me. And I'll know where to, and I know where to get you. <laughs> it was always creepy to see Agnes being so upbeat, but now that Wanda intentionally did it to her to punish her, like a mind prison, prison, it's especially horrifying. Like this is, yikes! You know, like like we know now. We we yeah. I guess we know by the early in episode eight or was it late episode seven? We we learn. You know, Agatha has always been playing along, which, you know. Yeah, some some people are saying it's it wasn't really Agatha all along. A lot of it was Wanda. But and and I think an argument could be made. But she is she she. Ah, one second, I have it right on the. 
she has been playing along all along. But now it is actually and just yeah, the the it was is I, I appreciate it. they gave like Agnes once once Agatha is in the, the mind prison, Agnes has like five lines or something right in a row and it's it's really, really yeah. Just just such such horrifying, you know, it's like you know, now now you're the nosy neighbor. Oh, okie dokie, artichoke. Or, yeah, I think that's the last one. But let's see, she also says, Wanda, look at the ghetto. Is it hot in here or just, or is it just you? I'll, I'll see you later. Not if I see you first. And just, oh, wow. Just, yeah. I know you said everything. I know you said everything right. Just not for us. Okay, yeah, technically, I guess it's maybe not the entire first 30 minutes. Maybe like maybe it is about 25 minutes if you take away the... the anyway, it's a lot. And, and Wanda shrinks the force field to only include a little bit around their own house. And the first time and last time we see the kids being tucked in. We can never truly leave each other even if we tried, which is very interesting, you know, that does suggest that they're coming back and that she's determined to keep, to, to bring them back. Like, she's she's basically saying, this is not the end, this is, this is like, yeah, we're, we're gonna, boys, thanks for choosing me to be your mom. As others have pointed out, that sounds distinctly like they are, and that she knows that they are, basically, like, yeah, maybe pieces of Mephisto's soul or something that they consciously chose to be her. And they also, they don't seem confused by that. They they don't really reject or, or agree or anything. They, they, you know, I mean, when you when you think about it, there, there have been a number of things where they react when something is out, when, when something is behaving weirdly. But, yeah, it, it really is the... the and and yeah, you know, if their if their spirits live on, just not these bodies, maybe if they got put in other bodies. I read somewhere that it's bad luck to say goodbye in the dark. No, you didn't. Wanda, I know we can't stay like this. Before I go, I must know what am I? You are the remains of the Mind Stone that lives in me. Your body is blood and bone that I created, but mostly you're my love. It's just, it's so, so sweet and so, like, there's there's real emotional complexity in the MCU. It's not just people punching each other. I'm just... Yeah. I, I, I was in love with the MCU from before I was 100% certain there was going to be MCU, right? From the very start of Iron Man. And it's just the, yeah, incredible, all, all the way through. I, once again, I'm not saying they did absolutely everything right, but they've done so much so right that it's, anyway. I was a voice with no body, a body with no memory. Who knows where I'll be next? And we see, you know, the, the force field keeps shrinking in on them. We have said goodbye before. So it stands to reason we'll say hello again and just such such well written excuse me. Really, really yeah. And vision gradually disappears right in front of Wanda and we see that you know she's she's standing in the in the lot where there could be a house that we saw her in before she created the force field. And Wanda starts to leave and all the People look at her as she does, and again, I really appreciate. You know, this this doesn't feel like uh, you know she's not she's not being lauded. There, I I think there's a lot of people who would have said that we shouldn't see the people. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and call them the people of Westview. As she's leaving, maybe some would say that at least one of them should say you know, you, you did the best you could, or, 
you know, you, you did make uh, some of us happy some of the time or something, but that's not what this calls for. This, you know, this, it really is. Yeah, and, and, you know, Wanda and Monica talk. You don't hate me? If I had your powers, I'd try to bring my mom back. I know I would. I'm sorry for all the pain I caused. I know. So, yeah, and I and others had figured that that was why Monica was helping. I'm glad to have it said by her directly and said to Wanda directly. You know, it really, like, a lot of people are going to consider Wanda a villain or borderline. It's certainly no longer a hero because of this. And I just really appreciate having someone, you know, look, look her right in the eye and said. I would have done the, the, the same thing. You know, I know that you're not, you didn't do this to hurt people, you know, and yeah, they, they do really great. And, and it is like, I feel like Monica is someone who has a lot of empathy. You know, when, when in, in Captain Marvel, for all that the, the, you know, a, a lot of the time when, when, a Kree or, you know, well, yeah, the Kree have been, have, have propaganda against it, but, you know, when, when a human being or a Kree encounters a scroll, a lot of, you know, most of the time they mistrust the scroll, but Monica pretty quickly, she, she was very open to, like, sitting there playing Uno with the, the, and, and it's such a, and, and, you know, she says, your eyes are beautiful, never change your eyes. You know, it's, it's, she, she's not focused, she, she's not sitting there thinking, oh, wow, her skin looks terrible compared to mine. She's like, your eyes are beautiful, don't change them. And, and I, I don't know, I think that might, she might be the scroll that Monica, you know, meets inside the, the, yeah. I, I didn't quite catch if, if her eyes were, in fact, the exact same color before and after she reveals herself to be a scroll. Let's see. So, so yeah, you know, 10 minutes or a fourth of the final episode is not nonstop action. And I think that I'm, I'm really glad that they do have the, the wrap up. You know, it, it isn't just, excuse me. I've, I've seen some of the other movies be criticized for speeding through the wrap up, such as, Captain America 2 and 3, and I, I can see what they mean, but here they do really, yeah, wrap, wrap up this, and yeah, and, and Wanda flies off in the full uniform, the credits start rolling, and like with the episode before this one, the real credits for the show, we, we don't get the fake sitcom ones as we have in earlier episodes, and... Yeah, so I guess the reason that Ralph Boner, Ralph Pietro had speed powers is because Wanda sent out a call for Pietro. We still don't know if it was, I mean, it probably was Agatha who gave him the speed powers and the, let's see, certainly I would figure that she would take away if Wanda gave him the speed power she would presumably take them away after once she no longer trusted him so the fact that he still has them suggests that it is Agatha and yeah mid credit scene who's giving orders and talking to Monica and then they're asking for you in the theater and Monica walks in and realizes there's no one in there but the woman who's sent in there reveals herself to be a scroll. And yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking it's the adult of, of the child scroll. Monica played with Captain Marvel. And and yeah, I also just briefly want to say it it's I really appreciate that it is like they they could have just had it be that Monica was sitting by herself and then in comes the scroll or something, but no, they specifically have you know, it is again like we know that they're not bad guys, but the scrolls still, you know, they they trick you by saying 
there's you know there there's something in here you need to see and then they get you alone and change you know i i really like how they're keeping that sort of there's still a little bit it's, i'm i'm not saying they're evil it it really appears that in the mcu the vast majority of almost all of the ones we've met are not evil but i do appreciate that there is still this like it's a little unsettling when when someone is yeah and yeah, so, you know, Fury or Talos sent the, the, see, that's the thing. Have we seen, um, well, I guess actually she may have been, yeah, was she, was she a sword agent that, I, I don't remember. I'm, I'm not 100% certain if we've seen the, the human form of this scroll before, but. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking Fury and Ortalo sent her the scroll to keep an eye on Monica to make sure she was safe, similar to how Fury, but really Talos, was there to keep an eye on Spider-Man far from home. I was sent by an old friend of your mother's. He heard you were grounded. He'd like to meet you. Where? And she points up and, excuse me, very, very clever. So, yeah, an old friend of her mother, and it's a man, I'm guessing Fury, last time we saw he was on a sword base in space somewhere, so Monica will now go there, which I figure is where we'll see her in Captain Marvel 2. I suppose it could be Talos, but I, I think it's more likely to be Fury. I think there's a greater chance that Fury would consider... Sorry. That Maria Rambeau would consider Fury a friend than Talos. So... But yeah, and the post credit scene where Wanda is sitting by herself on the porch of a house out in nature. Some have suggested that this is, she, she's gone back to part of Sokovia. It's just, you know, it's, it's or wait, yeah, technically, I mean, Sokovia itself isn't, is, is gone, but where, you know, near where Sokovia was. And, and some have pointed out it's a lot like the Incredible Hulk uh, post credit ending, sorry, ending scene, with the, or I guess, tech, was it right before the ending, and technically the ending scene was what we expected to be the end credits scene, anyway, you know, out, out in nature, kind of, you know, in, in a house by themselves, and, you know, the, the eyes glow with the color that their powers are, yeah, excuse me, and... Yeah, and then we see one in full Scarlet Witch get up, is reading the Dark Hold, and she hears the voices of her twins crying out for help. So this could very well be the setup for how she becomes involved in the multiverse. She's trying to find a place to save the, the twins. And let's see. And, you know, I can't help but wonder, maybe... Yeah, we, we didn't see the children disappear. We saw Vision disappear. We didn't see the children disappear. But, yeah, you know, I, I, I guess maybe there's a chance that she opened a portal into the multiverse and put them there and then closed it again, you know, again, by reflex. So she doesn't always know what she's creating with these. And, let's see, then the... Uh, there's another thing I want to see. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll think of it later. But yeah, you know, I'm definitely psyched to see where this is going. And the fact that there are two Wandas here at the end, you know, maybe maybe the one reading the Darkhold is like the astral projection similar to how in Doctor Strange. And yeah, I already talked about Doctor Strange could... Yeah, Doctor Strange could, you know, he, it seemed like his astral self, you know, yeah, his astral self could read, but his real body needed to sleep, but Wanda's real body can go around doing things. And, let's see. So, so yeah, you know, she seems to be even more powerful than Doctor Strange, and Agatha did tell her, you know, the, the Scarlet Witch is 
ru rumored to be even more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. And I guess she grabbed the Dark Hold at some point off screen. It's not really like a plot hole or anything. I, yeah, yeah, Agatha indicated it when she was talking about. It. So, you know, some somewhere. You know, maybe it landed on a rooftop during their duel, and Wanda went and grabbed it after putting Agnes in mind prison, so something. I gotta say, this finale is everything I hoped it would be and more. I am really, really going to miss this show. I know I said that at the start, too, but I really... Yeah. And, and I mean, the, the other MCU shows aren't mysteries, I don't think. So that I'm, I'm really going to miss... Um, an MCU mystery show, but I guess if enough people want more, they will make more. And I am really looking forward to the other ones. It's it's going to be apparently next week. We're not getting an episode. It's only the week after that that we're getting Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it's going to be weird to wait a full two weeks with no MCU. But you know, then there was quite a while passing with no MCU anything between Far From Home and the first episode of Wanda Vision, which is not the the fault of you know the Kevin Feige does not control the coronavirus. He couldn't possibly So anyway, you know, they, they got it to us as soon as they could. Excuse me. I would say that all the questions I really felt needed to be answered were answered. And let's see. A lot of things happen in the finale that I didn't see coming. Obviously, we knew Agatha had a plan for why she lured Wanda out of the cellar. We knew the two visions were going to fight. Yeah, I am a little bit surprised there wasn't an indication of some, someone having sent Agatha, similar to how the first Avengers ended with revealing that Thanos was behind Loki. And technically it is possible that there is someone behind Agatha that we'll find out in Doctor Strange 2. And let's see. So yeah, we also, we didn't see any mutants. We didn't see... We didn't meet Wu's missing person, and the the multiverse wasn't there. There wasn't an opening into the multiverse during the show. Of, let's see. And clearly, Wanda is a quick study for what witches can do. I like that Agatha could fight inside the nightmare that Wanda put her in. It makes sense. Both are witch powers. And Wanda is used to her powers being unique, so she maybe hadn't thought of the fact that Agatha could fight back in there. I really appreciate that White Vision at first just isn't expressing a lot of emotion. You could believe that Wanda would think it was still her vision. I mean, it wouldn't work if he had, like, an evil grin on his face. She would back away immediately. Let's see. And, yeah, her talk about hands on her face is like, and a loving gesture, physical affection, and maybe his programming even says that that would be an effective way to approach her. Yikes. That's, yeah, I honestly, I wouldn't put it past Hayward to, like, because he was sent in there to destroy Vision, and the, yeah. Let's see. Right, Dan Casey on Nerdist.com points out that maybe Ralph is named Boner because it's a dick move to make us think it was the X-Men Peter. And Agatha being trapped as Agnes, you know, I, I forget who it was on YouTube that, that said the following, but yeah, Agatha being trapped as Agnes is another example of Wanda is a hero, but she loves revenge. Holy crap. An hour and 54 minutes, and as soon as I stop recording this, I'm going to start doing the spoiler-free review itself. So that's probably also going to take a while, but 
yeah, that, that gives you an idea of how much I love this show. I can literally every single episode I've talked about for longer than the episode itself went on. So, yeah. And I, I don't think there is anything else. I think everything that I didn't write down, I... Uh, ah, what's it called? I remembered during recording the video, so I am, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.